So if you're ready for word, say word. Say word. That's more like it. That's more like it. Let's dive into the word of God. I'll be reading from Luke 10 and verses 38 to 42. Luke 10 verses 38 to 42. The scripture reads, As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, do you, do, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed. Or indeed, only one. Somebody say, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Father, this is your word. It is true. It is potent just in the form that it is. Lord, as I bring some revelation to your word through your Holy Spirit, we declare that your perfect will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So, we're seeing where there's a war going on. And I hear the concerns of the people. Like, what does this mean? Is this World War III? <laughs> Is this the end? I see overseas where people are saying the gas prices are going up since the war started. The oil price is going up. And I realize that the more I hear the fear of people or what they are thinking or what they are believing and what they are saying, the more I'm hearing it is almost like I feel like a great concern one for compound. And then I said to myself, whatever is happening across the world, we really can't do nothing about it. Mark you, we can pray. But what has to happen have to happen. And then I said to myself, this is why we need the word of God. This is why we need to stand on the word of God. So while Martha was so busy worrying, making preparations like a lot of us are doing, making preparations in our own way, the Lord was saying that Mary has chosen to do what is important. And what was Mary doing? She was listening to the words that were flowing from the mouth of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit was just reminding me that the word is the only thing that we have. Even if you lose your house, even if you lose your car, Nothing can take the word of God from you. The only way the word won't be active is if you are not using the word. Because the word is the only thing that we can rely on in this time and in this season. Not what the government says. Not what the, the, the projections are in terms of where the um, oil is at or where gas is at. The only thing that can keep us solid in this season is the word of God. The word of God says that thy word is what? A lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. The word of God will always lead us to safety. The word of God will always lead us to truth. The word of God will always lead us down the right path. We may think that if we get more money, that's the answer. That is not the answer. Prophet Didi and Miss said it best. The more money we come around, 
is the more problems we see. Because sometimes we think that more money fix things. No. More money means more enemy. More money means that you'll be targeted, you'll be targeted more. So that's not the antidote. That's not the solution. The solution is the word of God. The word of God says that man shall not live by what? Bread alone. But by what? Every word that proceeded out of what? The mouth of God. Listen what the word says. Right? In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verses 16 to 17 it says all scripture is God breathe and is useful for what teaching rebuking correction and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be what thoroughly equipped yeah thoroughly equipped for every good work you see the word of God is what we need in this season and that's why when Jesus was in the wilderness it was really a battle between words and I'm not just talking about any words I'm talking about words that came from the scriptures in the book of Matthew 4 and verses 1 to 11 it says then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil after fast after fasting 40 days and 40 nights he was what hungry the tempter came to him and said if you are the son of god tell these stones um, to become bread jesus answered it is written man shall not live on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of god then the devil took him to a holy city and 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 had him stand on the highest point of the temple then he said to god if you are the son of god he said Throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended to him. He said this was a battle between words. The devil was using the same words written to say to Christ, it is written. But Jesus was saying, it is also written the word of God is so powerful that the enemy will use the very word to deceive you you see when the scriptures are used out of context it can lead you astray and that's why you have to know the word of God for yourself and you have to know the situation and the context the context is very important so, a great example. Okay, so the word of God says, take no thought of tomorrow because every day has its own problem. That doesn't mean that you squander everything we have today. That is using the word out of context. To use it in context would be that, okay, today is tough and not, I don't see how tomorrow is going to work, but I'm not taking any thought of tomorrow because God is a provider. He will make a way for me. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. Mighty God. He said that he would supply all my needs. That is how you use that word into context. But it doesn't mean that if you have five grand today, you just like a splurge it and say, you know what the Bible says, take no thought of tomorrow. You're hungry tomorrow. So it was a battle between words. And not just any words, but words that were written. In the holy bible now there is a scripture for every situation and any situation so whatever you are going through now whatever the thoughts are i may not know them and i don't need to know them but i want you to know that there is a word in the bible for your situation that's why the enemy don't want to read this 
That's why the enemy one will sit down and watch series, Netflix series, and not read the Bible. That's why the enemy one will sit down and just all cooked up into CNN and all the news. What happened? What fired a rocket? Yeah, what a rocket? Yeah, name all of these things and blah 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 blah. Nah, 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 nah. Because at the end of the day, he doesn't want us to get into the word of God. They have flow so much, we never remember the title. The title is called Only One Thing is Needed. <laughs> Only one thing is needed. Flow, Holy Spirit, flow, flow. So there is a word for every and any situation. So if we're going to look at life, we have some things that most of us, we do go through. We all have enemies. Not you. The enemy is after us. Huh. The enemy always after us. But I, know what him not, I don't know what him not after us. Right? But if your enemies is after you, no. It's not all the time you can fire a rocket. Sometimes you have to just go into the word of God. And I'm talking about Luke 6 and verse 35 that says, but love your enemies. Ooh, nobody never want to hear that one day. The enemy after us, no, I don't know one done them. No, and all the time you can't dumb them. Sometimes you have to love them. I remember seeing this preacher in Canada. He was preaching, and this guy came up to him and he was in his face like he wanted to fight him. And the guy was so angry. And all I saw the preacher do was just allow the love of Christ. I never know some man who want to come down a preacher would be hugging him like two minutes after. Whatever, what, whatever was on the inside of that man that made him so angry. The solution to the problem was never to fight back at him. It was to express the love of Christ. So the scripture said, but love your enemies. Do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the most high. Because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked Jesus. Who could it be but God? Because he is kind to the un when somebody ungrateful. Oh, Jesus, and wicked. Yeah? He says, be merciful just as your father is merciful. We're talking about situation. Have you ever felt like you're suffering for doing something good? I can't tell you about that. Last week, I pushed out early. Forgot the gym. I don't never know what I'm going to laugh. Anyway, laugh. Better on the laugh than on the front. So I pushed out early if I go to the gym. And when I reached on a particular part, I realized hey, I saw so traffic. So, I see everybody I got over so. And I cut and I come back around so. And when I cut and come around so, then I find a way to squeeze in a so. So me I do it the right way, but my line now nah move. So I look apart and I was tempted for a prophet. Go round, sir. And come back round, sir, because you now win. And you have somewhere for go. But I look apart and I say, do what is right. Don't follow them. Me did I suffer. I'm not telling a lie. And all when the stoplight says stop, them still pile up around the sun. I'm not moving. And I say, Jesus, oh, come here, do the right thing. I'm here, suffer, suffer. But I'm all it. Till I want to reach you under the night, my neighbor said to me, say, But the other day, I'm not see up on the tool, I'm see you push out around half an hour before me. I just remind myself because I was doing the right thing. Yeah. So sometimes we feel as if we're suffer for doing the right thing. But guess what? There's also a scripture for that. Somebody says scripture. scripture. First Peter verse 3 and verse 14 says, But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are what? In the moment, I feel that we are there, but I suffer for doing what is right. But what? I am blessed. And it says, do not fear their threat. Do not be frightened. When you go down to verse 17 of the same passage of scripture, it says, for it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. 
Someone never knows that that scripture didn't exist. Not true. Talk truth. There is a scripture for what? Everything. Everything. Have you ever felt unworthy? Have you ever felt like I've messed up so much that God can't love me? Yes, this morning? Wow. Wow. But let's see. Tanya, you know. What time? Con- this confession is good for the soul. Thank you, Jesus. You feel that way, but guess what? Somebody said, there's a word for that. <laughs> Romans 8 and verses 38 to 39 says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, neither height nor death, nor, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Come on. You might feel like you're not worthy. You might feel like you have messed up. But I'm telling you that there's a word for your situation. I said nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. All them for said the word no powerful. Hmm? All them for say the word of God is not powerful when there's something for every situation that you are facing. You ever feel anxious yet? Like anxiety has slapped you for six? Tell somebody there's a word for that. Yeah man, there's a word for that. Isaiah 35 and verse 4 and I'm going in the Amplified. It says, say to those with an anxious and panic-stricken heart, be strong. Fear not. Indeed, your God will come with what? Vengeance for what? The ungodly. Yeah? And what he goes on to say, read it, read it loud. With what? With what? With the recompense of what? Will what? And then what? He will save you. Sometimes people send some threat and you start to get nervous. Sometimes for your past life, they want to blackmail you. But God has said, don't worry yourself. Me will fight for you. Me will defend you. And that's why when evil people are doing evil things, all we have to do is talk to God. Because God is a just God. Me say, make them threaten you all they want. Because sometimes they want to blackmail you for keep you back in life and for keep you in a darkness. But when we step out of darkness and we see light, we're not going back. So you do what you want to do because God is going to do what he has to do. Tell someone there's a word for everything. Some of us, we are we're not warriors. We are warriors. You're the warriors. Say, when it's sound heavy, everything will worry, worry, worry. Hmm? Tell somebody there's a word for that. Mm-hmm. Matthew 6, verses 25 to 27. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your. No, I'm wanting to say it. Do not worry about your. Do not worry about your do not worry about your life. Let me just pause it right there. So because enough of us who worry about our life. What got happened to me? Jesus and peace. How I got to the picnic them. Mighty God. I hold this like a workout. I said, do not worry about your do not worry about your life. What you will eat or drink. A regular we worry about that. Or about your body. What you will wear. Some of us will had that this morning before we come to church. But now not for wear. It's not life more than food. And the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the year. They do not sow or reap. Or store away in the barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. You ever see the bird them more them up yet? The bird them they have not flushed the toilet. Them just do what they want for the whatever they want for them, they don't care. Them just a galang so. This man mo open my side door, me say, Jesus and peace, like the body that they have not there, yeah. (laughs) 
You know, so I live life, I go long, so I do them thing. Yeah? But the scripture says, are you not much more, not even more, no, much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Worrying is useless. Worrying does not change anything at all. It's the more we feel the pressures of life, it's the more we need to run to the word of God. Let me just say it and let me say it bold. Including myself. From time to time, we take the word of God for granted. We not understand the power that we have. That's why Satan hates us so much because he knows that we have a whole heap of power. We not understand how words powerful. Sometimes one person says something to you. And sometimes for the whole week, you still can't get over it. You can't sleep. Because the person where you cook for. Uh, any meal you cook, ox still. It's expensive. Are you mixing nice lemonade? Are you never using the, um, the lime juice you buy in a supermarket? You go pick lime. Maka choke you. And you cut the lime. I you squeeze it. Boy, suck down the lemonade and belge. How many people tell you say no one are you? Three months and you're still over it. It's not even a good Paragraph. Me, no, one, yo. Four words on you. And we have words in the Bible for kill demon and what they are play. When boys say they're not wild, don't say to boys, hey, look here. I your last. I am fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. I said there's a word for every situation. I say when the spirit are gonna remind me, say, and the word alone can see every now this time. I feel it in my stomach. If we're not speaking this, then let me ask you a question. What are you speaking? Because the word of God says that life and death are supposed to have flow. It's a bitter and sweet water can't flow to the same mountain. You can't use the same mouth for curse, brother. You can't use the same mouth for call down calamity for yourself. And when they don't say, Jesus, I love you. Make up your mind where you do them out. Is that you're going to speak life? Or are you going to speak death? Words are powerful. Just like when somebody looks at you and say, Wow, you're beautifully clad this morning. It makes you feel good. Just like how Mr. Minister God feel good about himself from morning. From a come in, I'm a see him smell and I say, I feel yourself this morning. And I knew I was right because by then come to the office. He must say, Well, everybody's complimenting me. Yeah, I see it. It show up on you. So if words. Can't give this man more life on top of the life I already have. So now the same way, words will kill you off if you're not careful. But you have to choose which side of the fence you want to be on. Listen to me. When I'm going through some of my darkest moments, it's how I have to come back to. The word. Let me a Bible. Let me quite have your Bible. You know if you read this and if you too, Chris. <laughs> it like it got you some battles. But see there. Sometimes it's never about the iPad or the phone. Sometimes you have to go for this. <laughs> go for the physical. Where you can feel the leaf. Them. I'm not, I'm, I'm, and I'm not lying. When I, read, when I read the Bible in this format, you know. Is a whole different feel than when I read it. Pan, this, you know. 
I kid you not. I don't understand. I don't tell you that there's something super spiritual about it. But I don't tell you that it's a whole different feel and energy I get from those turning the leaves. This is powerful. But this is not powerful lying down. When you grow up and say, if you want to run demon, just sleep with the Bible. You sleep with the Psalms. Open over there. That's not run the demon. Demon with more say, hey. Afraid and afraid. Call running upon them. Because leaving the Bible open by your bed and I read it. You know what I mean? One thing, Michi. So tapi. Just have a little picnic were just born. I have little the little Bible. What do you call them? New Testament, the little blue one open over a picnic head. No, stop have a demon over a picnic head. Read the scripture over the picnic and go along by your business. What is I gonna do? What did what is I gonna do? This a cause not damage to nobody. Listen to me. We are before my married. I'm a, I always have to say we are before my married. But me have a little girlfriend and she come over the yard. We say we are read Bible together. I rule, we say I rule over this, you know. Rule. <laughs> and let me be a lesson to the single people. Them, um. let me the man come over here. Born a Bible study. No. <laughs> Not do it. Because the intention is that. Only too bad. The intention is that that is not that I want to roll. That that was never the intention. The intention is that we are gonna read the word. But you see, if you have the word and I put the word into practice, you know, make a sense. Or if you know the word, don't behave like say you are Sylvester Stallone. The better behave like you're a Rambo. All right. We have feel like say, we can't manage. Because sometimes you have to know the word and still run. You have to run to save your life. When you think Jesus never knew the word, he knew the word. And when Jesus got word that John the Baptist was beheaded, it's a Jesus, and then Jesus moved to the next region. You think he never had the word? But him just know, say, uh -uh. And am my time yet? Moving along. So when you want to be safe, sometimes you have to know the word and still cut. Again, you just have to know the situation and the context. Because all the time, sometimes you have to turn up and declare the word of God. When you feel like it's a warfare in your house, it's not the time to run. At your house. The demon not pay no rent and no mortgage around your soul. So if something in your soul, you have to come out. Sometimes we have to do some things and everything with God, the Holy Spirit of God instructed for the day can come share. Because people think you're mad. But at your situation, if you know how to deal with it. Sometimes you have to just open your door and just sit down. I said, I'll get two minutes to come out. Yeah. You not belong here, sir. Notice of eviction. Come out. Yeah, man, you have to go and sit down a little bit and the same tongues over there about the other day. Ranama toko, zikarabazo, korama takayaka, shiarabazo. Satan, I say, come out. And when you feel the peace in the environment, you just get up back and just lock back your front door and go and go lie down. Take authority. Because God has given us authority. Luke 10, 19. I've given unto you what? Authority. 
to tread upon what serpents and upon what scorpions and over what all the power of the enemy and nothing shall harm you word again word for your situation your top off some of you sick in my body I feel sick in my body the word of God says by his stripes I am healed the word of God says healing is what the children's bread it belongs to me it come me like I'm a bird right Sometimes we just let go of all our business because we are saying, Look, help. Your help comes from the Lord. Your help comes from God's word. Jesus Christ. You know, you're me, I tell you, the authority is in your mouth. Use it wisely. So Jesus said to Martha that you are worried and upset about many things but few things are needed or indeed what? Only one. Somebody say only one. So a few things must be done in order to reinforce the one thing. I don't want to give you those points this morning quickly. A few things need to be done to enforce that one thing. And number one is you must know the word. If you don't know the word, you can't fight warfare. You can't fight warfare not knowing the word because uh, we wrestle not against our flesh and blood. We, this is not a carnal war. So you have to know the word and apply the word to your situation uh, Accordingly. Second Timothy 2 and verse 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightfully what? Dividing the word of truth. See, Minister Kevin, there I always say, I admire him. He's a man who just know the word. He will just read out the word. Just go along some. Men have that gift. Some people have it. You want to give me a demo? Get him a mic. Come give me a demo. Come. Get him a mic. Quick, quick, quick. Where are my pastor? Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Come here, minister. No. And you know what I love about this? Because the minister having baby locks him with a group. <laughs> And a regular man I go look at me and say, them man look like them are some girlies or some bad man or, you know, <laughs> rare. But the word is on the inside of you. Amen, amen, amen. Just, 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 just talk some scripture. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The same that was in the beginning with God, all things were made by him and for him. Without him there was nothing made that, that was made. In him was light and the light was the light of men. The light became darkness. The light became light and dwell among us. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and when Jesus learned that the Pharisees and scribes hear that he was baptizing more disciples than John, Jesus, although Jesus himself was not baptizing, but his disciples, Jesus left Judea and went to Samaria. And he was passing through Samaria near a field that Jacob gave to his son, that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. <laughs> the well was there. Jesus was weary as, as he was from his journey sitting beside the well. <laughs> a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. She said, how oh, is it that you, a woman of Samaria, ask me a drink? Because the Jews have no dealing with Samaria. His disciple went into the, the town to buy food. Jesus said to her, if you know who it is that asks you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Go back over there, so minister. Me not know it over there. That's a gift all by itself. Mark you. I mean, I won't go ahead of myself. It takes practice. But some of us are practicing the wrong things. Somehow we wouldn't know how to give back a gossip story from start to end every detail. 
But who do not know the detail of the scripture? Because it says what you choose to put your focus in is what you're going to get out. So we must know the word of God. Now, that's number one. Number two, when you know the word of God, you must believe the word. Because it's only by believing that the word is going to become active. Some of us, the word is there, but the word is not activated. There's a difference between having something and activating it. I just got some new cards from the bank. Right now, if I was supposed to give you the card and say, pay for something, you can't pay for nothing. Why? You're not activated yet. But I have the card. It is there. I know. My name is on it. It belongs to me. Just like how God has given us the word for us. For us, for we, to help us while we are on earth. But if we don't activate, it is useless. So, we must believe because believing is what activates the word. You can quote the scriptures from now to thy kingdom come, that is good. But if you don't believe what you are saying. You ever hear somebody talk about himself and him not sound so confident? About what am I saying to themselves? It's the same way. The enemy knows that when we are just quoting the scriptures, but we are not confident in what we are saying. Sometimes you have to recite it enough for you to start to believe it. There are times when I'm reading the word and, I'm, and I've read something and I, I don't understand it, so I can't really say it with a whole lot of conviction. But the more I recite it, Minister Deidre, it's the more, may I say, oh, this, that, oh, because the moment I start to understand it, my belief system in that same word goes to a whole different level. So when I started to say it to when I understood what it's really saying, is a different level of confidence and power. That it comes forth with. So even when I say, are you ready for word? Word. Wouldn't that sound like I'm not ready? Word. I let me say, no man. If you're ready for word, say word. Word. Then that says to me. Okay, the first one. You know, sound like we're ready for you, but we're ready now for you. At least we'll come here for Because sometimes we'll come here when I know we'll come here for you. Know? It's on a way. Sometimes I just routine. We forgot church on Sunday, but sometimes we really know what we'll come here for. Anytime I come in here, I come in here to make sure that I deliver the word that God gave me to deliver. It's not all the time I come in here and I feel like it, but I know that by the time I come here, so it has to go on. Because sometimes what I have to bring is what is going to take you out. So when you come here, you must know that yes, you come here to give, but you also come here to receive. It's two things you come to give and you come to receive. So you have to know why you come. So we must what? Believe the word of God. 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 13 says. And we also thank God continually because when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as it actually is the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe so the word of god is only activated when we believe the word of god is only at work in us when we believe so if you are feeling sickness in your body and you believe that by his stripes you're really healed then what you have done is activated the word on the inside of you so the healing process can start the belief system is one that we always have to have on par. Because the belief system is what shifts everything. We were talking about that just Wednesday. Just Wednesday. That God allowed Lazarus to die so that the disciples may believe. He said, for your sake, I came here so that you may believe. 
Sometimes we take our belief system for granted. Because these disciples would have walked with Jesus. They would have seen Jesus heal people. They would have seen Jesus turn water into wine. And they were still in disbelief. So, so, so Jesus had to allow Lazarus to die. He said, all right, we got to take it to a whole different level. Let me see me turn water in a while. Let me see me open two blind eyes. Let me see me believe it. What am I going to do now when I'm resident? Because it's a whole different level that now. So Jesus said, for your sake, I did not come. While Lazarus was sick, but I don't want him dead. Just raise him back. So that you may believe. So don't take the believing aspect of the word for granted. Because that is where the power flows from. I always tell you, people talk about, oh, I want to see the supernatural. Is one thing trigger the supernatural, you know? You think I've run up and down and make nice? Believe. That's it. Believe take you from the natural to the supernatural. That's it. Tell somebody, just believe. Mighty God. So number one, know the word. Number two, believe the word. And number three, somebody said, work the word. Matthew 7 and verse 24 says, Therefore, everyone who has an hearer, everyone who hears these words of mine and put them into practice. Let me say it again. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and put them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. What did I say earlier? Minister Kevin, practice. For him to be saying, for him to be really not the scripture, he is him not read it one time. There's no way you can read it one time. Where you think we know the Lord is my shepherd? Repetition. Where you think we know the our father prayer? I think we just get up and read it one time. From when they are picking at school, we are it over and over and over and over. That would have said no and it coming like nothing. But what if we can have the same mindset with other books in the Bible? Other Psalms in the Psalm series? What if we disciplined ourselves to say this week, I want to learn Psalm, say Psalm 12. Because this is only eight verses. And this is what I'm challenging myself to do. I'm not just a week, but... Pick a scripture that means something to you. Pick, pick a scripture that identifies with your situation. And recite it. In 2019, when I almost lost my mind, I had a passage of scripture from, from well, that be too long for my member, but may I tell you, I'm read it, 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 till it became like everything to me. It became like everything to me. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. Google! Because we don't know it all. So if you feel as if you're not going to make it in life, just go Google and type in scriptures that encourage or encouraging scriptures. And look for the one that your spirit identify with. Hold on to that one. Learn it. Recite it. Just like how you make, um, what you call the thing when you put on cartridge paper? Um, vision board just like i would go on and create a vision board get a piece of cartridge paper and put that scripture there and just know say i'm scripture this is the season it's not for death for your lifetime when the season and they can take it down but i this me a whole on to for the season mommy and daddy when they pick them a grow up and they're going to the teenage years and they're going on and they're not listening you talk to them just put up something that the house man say i saw me and my house we will serve the Lord. You know, you me tell us that there's a scripture for everything. Let us not take the word of God for granted. If you're feeling down and depressed this morning, I just want to remind you of a word from the scripture. It says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. There's a word for everything situation you feel like you're dying this morning no i shall not die but live to the clear jesus christ he know hear me said there's a word for everything 
I would just like two persons. Not to share anything in detail, but just to share a scripture that you held on to within a season. Who is willing this morning? You're willing? Come. Get me a mic. Get me a mic. You don't have to tell us where it's taken from. We're not pressure you this morning. We just want. All right, so quickly, what were you going through? Um, I had some financial difficulties and it kind of got me down like sad. But during that time I was praying and when I opened the Bible, I landed on a scripture that said that where there is life, there is hope as it is better to be a living dog than a dead lion. Wow. And what did that scripture do for you at the time? The fact that I'm alive, it just encouraged me that no matter what, it could have been financial loss, health, anything. Once you're alive, there is hope. Glory to God. One more person. One more person. Come, 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 woman of God. Just quickly, what were you going through? I can remember in my sickness and your prophesy over me before I went overseas. And you told me if I just listen to the voice of God and I trust in him and have faith in him, he can bring me through. So I was going through my phone. I actually had the Bible up on my phone. Mm -hmm. And I was going through the phone and I book upon by his strides, I am healed. And from that day, I hold on to that word and know that God is going to heal me. Amen. Amen. Come, Lady Josephine. Can I like your one talk? I ain't want to talk. You don't want to talk. I'm going to see a guitar off. I see like a Union Shelly and phrase out of the blocks. Yeah? What were you going through? Um, right now, I'm going through a lot. But I, I read the scripture. I don't remember where. But it just said, I should trust God and leave everything to him. And he will come through for me. So I'm just trusting God and waiting on my time to come. Amen. So that is trusting the Lord with all your heart and leading to your own understanding. Is there one more person who wanted us to describe what word took them through a season? Is there one more? Come, Lady Marvia. You come to woman of God? Okay. All right. I'm going to take the two on. Come, Lady Marv. Come. After Lady Marv. All right. Come. When you come. When you come. Come. Let's come. What was the situation? So I have really bad anxiety. Like anything that comes like situation after situation, I have really bad anxiety. And I was going through Pinterest one of these days looking for a wallpaper. And I come upon this wallpaper with a scripture and it says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And I put that as my screensaver for a long time. And it was there and it was still there. So that's the scripture that brought me through. Awesome. Come, Lady Ma. Turn it. All right. Good morning, everyone. All right. All right. The scripture that stood with me and is still. Um, I remember before I got baptized, like I was kind of wondering, wondering. I said, God, you know, I want to do everything the right way before I come to you. And I remember one day I was there talking to God and I heard Matthew 6, 33. I'm like, God, what does that mean? Because I didn't know the Bible like that. Mm -hmm. So when I went and I thought he said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness. I said, all right, God, that's confirmation. And I went ahead, no doubt, and I, and I got baptized. And, and I must say... Everything that I wanted hasn't been here, has not come yet, but I can see where everything is falling in place. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, just like that. So it's not just me speaking to you this morning, but we hear the testimony of others of the situation or the situations that they would have been going through. And the word of God was the thing that changed everything for them. So it's only one thing that is needed. And that is what? The word of God. But a few things must be done in order to reinforce this one thing. And number one is? Know the word. Number two? Believe the word. And number three? Work the word.